Hey, what's going on? It is B, the installer, and I am here to show you the LG CX and give you my thoughts. Uh, I actually purchased this TV, and so I'm on the consumer end for once. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I have installed about 10,000 TVs over the course of the last 12 years, so I have a pretty good idea of a quality and some of the more practical things that the TVs are good for or not so great for. And hopefully this practical review of this LG CX will give you uh, some more information that you can add next to the more technical reviews that you may have already seen. So real quick, if you're a subscriber, thanks for checking back in with me. If you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe, hit the like button and make sure you Ring that notification bell and set it to all so that you get all of the new videos that we're gonna upload. Gonna install this TV, gonna show you the differences between this and a QLED. And while I'm at it, I wanna let you know that if you have any questions regarding this product or other products, installation, services, whatever, definitely hit me up below, ask any questions you'd like to ask. I'll try to do my best to answer them for you. So I wanted to start with unboxing this TV and I just wanna let you know this TV is very well packaged. So uh, I was a little concerned at first when it came through the door. When opening the top, I found the remote, uh, not much else to it. You really can just lift the whole top of the box off and the TV stays in with the styrofoam on it and the base and all that stays together. So you really don't even need to open the top. Once I got it open, I found out that the stand is a majority of the weight of this TV or at least like 50%. I can understand why the stand is so heavy because you wanna protect this great TV if you're gonna set it up on the stand and it's gonna be upright, you don't want it tipping over. So uh, it's very heavy stand. However, it is not the easiest stand to put on the TV. And there are no instructions to put the stand on either. I looked through the entire box, through the manual, no instructions. I know it's not rocket science to put this on, but I felt a little bit like Chris Ramsey when he starts one of those new puzzles uh, trying to figure out what's going on. Now, obviously this is not quite as difficult as those puzzles, but it did take me a professional installer like 20 minutes to get the stupid stand on. And I don't put the stands on that often, but you know, LG could make it very simple. They could put a little bit more styrofoam under the front of the OLED so that it's a little higher. Then you could just take the bottom styrofoam off and the TV would be suspended as opposed to having to find a bed or a couch so somewhere else to uh, put this TV on. Uh, we happen to have stadium seating in our living room, so I didn't have any great place to put this TV, so I wanted to lay it down flat on the ground and see if I get the stand on, which was a disaster. It took me forever. I ended up having to kind of shove some more styrofoam underneath it at an angle. Uh, that got me a little nervous that the, the screen was gonna have a little too much pressure on it. So once I got it stood up, I got extremely nervous about this TV being so thin. And it's one thing when I go to a customer's house and I have to put their TV up and I let them know it's a little thin and just to be careful. But when it's in your own home, it's really thin. I mean, it's, it's a concern. And so this is one of the things you have to think about when purchasing this TV versus another, is that this OLED TV is very cool looking, but it is extremely thin. And if you're gonna have it wall mounted, one hard turn into the wall could crack the screen. But after you turn it on, all the concerns wash away to the amazing picture quality, and it is remarkable, I have to say. If you check out any review site or any other videos, you're gonna find out that most people rank these OLEDs as the best TVs out there. The LG OLED has perfect blacks, it has amazing picture quality, and to be honest, one of the problems I now have is to find good content to watch on this TV. Now I'm having to think about if I'm going to buy a 4K Blu-ray player or if all the different streaming apps we watch on a regular basis can handle this TV, can give us the HDR, the Dolby Vision. Some of them aren't even in 4K yet. And so while it's absolutely amazing, I'm a little bummed when I turn on just your typical Spectrum cable app and to see the typical 1080p content that just doesn't look that remarkable when you actually put on an HDR video on YouTube, it's mesmerizing. So, you know, what content are you gonna watch? Does it make sense for you to buy a really expensive TV? Or the mid-range TVs, are they still gonna be able to display what you guys watch or play or games or whatever uh, without the uh, high price tag? So a couple of things about this TV, it has four HDMI 2.1 ports. So that means that you're gonna be kind of future proof for most of the technology that's coming out. It has an optical port for if you have an older sound bar or older stereo system. It has an ethernet, you can connect and hardline straight to your network. It has an antenna and then it also has an analog composite input that you can connect to old school stuff too. I don't really know why because most people don't. And it has uh, multiple USB 
port so that you can plug in like a Roku and then plug in the power right to it as well and it turns on with your TV. So the HDMIs, the optical, the ethernet, that's about as far in as I'm gonna get on the technical specs of this TV. Is that stuff important to you? Let me know because I'm trying to give you a more practical review, trying to give you the information that differentiated this from the other TVs that I was gonna buy. So with that said, one of those things that really had me concerned was the screen reflectivity. And I was at Costco looking at this TV and other TVs when I was buying the Santa's mount that I'm gonna install it on. Uh, I was looking up and you could see the reflection of the lights above. And when you look at the LG, it's like an exact mirror of that. And so when I went over to the Samsung to compare with their uh, anti-reflective screen, it actually looked worse. I mean, it was a little bit less bright of a reflection, but the reflection spread across the whole screen because it has that weird coating on it. So I know that overall, the brightness of those Samsung TVs along with that anti-reflective coating is supposed to help, but, but it definitely does kind of stretch out that light. So if you have one problem light in your background, it kind of makes it a little worse or stretches it from top to bottom or left to right. So let me know what you think about this screen reflection right here. Is this too much for you? And that's an extreme angle and that's, you know, into a, you know, a wide open room. So yes, during the day and with a bright room, you're definitely gonna get some screen reflection, but that happens with every TV. And then it comes down to the brightness of the TV being able to, you know, push through that light and display versus, you know, if it's a dark screen or if it's a dark scene, of course, you're gonna have some problems. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the brightness of the screen. That is another part of if a screen is reflective or if you can see what's behind you or if you can see your surroundings in the screen, the brightness, if it pushes through, you kind of don't notice it as much. So I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the brightness of this TV. I know that there are other TVs, especially the QLEDs that are brighter, but it's kind of all relative. Um, picture quality versus brightness, reflective screen, you're gonna be in a dark room, a light room, et cetera, a lot of different things, right? So far, I've been pretty happy with the amount of brightness that comes out of this OLED. And so overall with this purchase, I'm pretty happy with those typical comparisons of brightness and screen reflectivity and you know the, the picture quality and all these things. This TV is remarkable. I do have a couple of things that I'll let you know real quick uh, that do bother me a little bit. And this may just be me personally, but these are things that I wanna tell you about. One thing that's not quite as good as the Samsung is the remote. And some people like the Magic Remote, some people don't even know what the Magic Remote is, but it has a remote that can kind of point at the screen and you can move it around like a cursor. Um, I find it a little bit difficult to use. In addition, I'm not really sure why there's numbers on this remote, there's so many buttons. Uh, I prefer a very simple remote. I've come accustomed to a Roku remote or an Amazon stick remote, Apple TV remote, and the Samsung remote that I have is a Bluetooth remote. And not only that it's Bluetooth and can work in and out of the room uh, and with many other devices, but it's just simple. To have the buttons, the up, down, left, right, okay, home button, reverse, and power button is really all you need. And I don't typically need um, you know, this, this cursor that's pointing around all the time, although our dog really loves uh, jumping at the cursor. Uh, that's a little bit problematic though because he's almost tall enough that he could scratch the screen here So I'm excited to get this up on the wall and out of harm's way The second thing that's a little more complicated is the menu uh, It does have quite a bit of menu to it and that could be good or bad I guess a lot of people the gamers or the people that are really technical love that it has all these features You can mess around with but honestly it confused the heck out of me uh, I'm sitting here trying to get it to the standards that people like and I'm just the pictures getting worse and it's getting better and I'm having a hard time just out of the box it, it seemed fine to me but trying to mess with all the different functions of this TV kind of confused me it was a little bit hard to do and I, I do this all the time trust me and the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the the, the fear of OLED burn-in now I am not concerned with that you have a desktop computer or you watch the same news program 24 7 and leave your TV on you may get burn-in most devices and uh, most services having um, you know different screen savers even the LG TV itself has a blackout and then it has a little fireworks going off here and there so not a big deal to me I mean all TVs have a shelf life for one reason or another and I'm more concerned with cracking the screen on the wall or the TV or the OS just failing inside the TV than I am specifically with burn-in burn-in is not one of those things that you can get a warranty for at least on square trade 
probably other places as well because burn-in's a little subjective. I mean, you may say you, you see a little bit of burn-in there, then how do they quantify that? Do they get you a new TV? So um, I don't have a concern with it as an installer. I've seen a lot of these TVs, never had a client call me back and say, oh, they got burn-in, why do they get this OLED? So if all the other reasons make sense to you, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. So this LG CX is plenty bright in the daytime and the reflection doesn't bother me. And at night, it's truly amazing. The picture quality is just unparalleled. So I'm literally gonna install this TV now. And when I'm finished with that installation, that will be right here and down in the description. I hope to find more 4K content and I am probably gonna buy a uh, 4K Blu-ray player because I wanna watch some of these great movies that people are talking about. Uh, let me know what you think about that. What, what is a good movie that I could watch? Uh, what's your first go-to when it comes to HDR and 4K and all that? Let me know that in the comments, please. And also, again, I really wanna know QLED or OLED. I wanna know what you guys think. And while I'm talking about questions, I might as well ask. So I have these products here. I have a Harmony Remote, a Harmony Elite. Uh, I have some Philips Bluetooth headphones that I got. And of course, this Echo Dot. And I wanna know what you guys think I should do as far as a review. Should I do a review on one of these? Should I do a review on all of them and, and tell you guys how they all work together? Uh, that might be interesting. Let me know that in the comments as well. Uh, I'm happy to kind of take your guys' lead on what the next video should be. All right, thanks guys. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so that you get my next video. Make sure you let LG know that you want me to get all kinds of free TVs, right? Just remember, with the right advice, you can be the installer.